So I'm just getting back to this project after doing other things for a couple of months. This is a bicycle frame that I built. Note the bike is upside down. I built this out of 5 8 inch 4130 chromoly tubing that I got from Online Metals. The whole thing is brazed. It has six mounting points. See there it mounts to the seat post and then it mounts at four points on the frame. So there's six mounting points. And after I brazed it all up, a lot of the brazing was done on the bench, of course, because this frame has been recently powder coated. So I was doing most of the brazing on the bench and it fit on pretty nicely. But then when I put it together, some of the tubing cracked at one of the joints. And I'll show you a close up of the cracked tubing that I'm going to be fixing today. Right in the center of the frame, you see the crack. Like I say, when I put the custom made bicycle rack onto the frame and I tightened all the bolts, that was the adjustment that the rack made and it pulled the tubing apart a little. Now the reason it was able to pull the tubing apart is that I had sanded down my bronze and sanded down my joint, filed down my joint, made the wall thinner. That joint probably had too much heat go into it becoming a little brittle. And right now that tubing is very thin. I would estimate it to be 45 thousandths. Here's the underside of the crack, the other view of the crack. And this is 1.7 power magnification. I'm trying to hold the camera still. So that is a crack in the 049 tubing. And you see the filler material there, which is I used CO4 and low fuming bronze, the whole thing is brazed. Now if I put this rack on the bench, that crack won't be there because the, the bike rack relaxes to a position and closes the crack. But when I install the frame on the bike, it sort of pulls it apart there. And that was the adjustment that the rack made. So I am probably going to braze it while it's mounted to the bike frame on the repair stand. So now I've prepped it for the brazing job. I used 80 grit emery cloth and acetone. This frame was bare metal sitting in my garage for two months and so it got a light coat of rust all over it. So now it's ready for the brazing job. The reason I didn't use high temp JB Weld, even though I could have, is because my powder coater asks me to tell him when I've done so and when he preps the metal, if it has any JB Weld on it, he needs to be mindful of that and maybe change up how he does the chemical stripping or the sandblasting. And I would just as soon give him parts that are all metal and he can do the metal stripping and the metal prep however he wants. So now what I've done is I've taken a bunch of scrap metal and covered all of the parts of my bicycle frame and my seat and my repair stand so that they don't get burned during the brazing process. Another quick thing about the JB Weld is the high temp JB Weld is okay up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. And my powder coater tells me that his oven only goes up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So as far as the powder coating operation is concerned, the high temp JB Weld isn't a problem. It's the metal prep because sometimes he'll use chemical stripping and I understand that that would dissolve the JB Weld. One more thing I want to say before I start raising this is that I'm, I've set it up to where gravity is going to work to my advantage. I put the crack up so that the low fuming bronze or CO4 or whatever I use may drip into the crack. So I just cleaned my tip. That's a triple lot tip, which is a cheap import. And my torch that I'll be using today is probably my favorite torch. It's a Victor medium duty torch. It's wonderful. I've decided to use 1 16th filler material, CO4. I bought that from Henry James Bicycle Supply. And at the same time, I bought this Pace Flux that you see there, Gas Flux Type B, which is designed to be used with that exact filler material. That's what we use in frame building school at United Bicycle Institute. And how it works is you use these acid brushes to paint on the flux. And then when you 
heated up, when the flux becomes clear, it's telling you that the temperature is perfect for melting the CO4. There are my tanks, and I'm going to use 3 PSI acetylene and 5 PSI of oxygen. I also have this stuff, which I use a lot of. It's Blue Demon Low Fuming Bronze LFBFC, and that would have worked also. That stuff's real easy to use. It has the flux on it. So here's what it looks like after the paste flux has been applied. I used a lot of paste flux. You can use all you want. The only reason that you wouldn't want to use too much is for cost. So I put a little bit in the surrounding area so that the metal wouldn't oxidize. So here I'm taking a break to see how I did. The camera and the light and everything was in my way a lot. Um, went pretty much as planned. The flux got clear and then when I went to add the bronze, it wasn't wanting to adhere to the steel. So I added some more heat and then I was trying to shove some rod in there and this tubing is so thin that the thin edges of the along the crack were melting away. So now I have the hole there that I'm going to fill and I just gave it a rest one because my iPhone can't handle very large files if I'm going to put it on my desktop and two I didn't want to overdo it on the heat this joint has already had too much heat put into it So here's what it looks like after that second round of brazing. I guess the secret's out there, I'm not the world's best brazer. So I put a lot of material in there, hoping that it would get in the cracks. And now I'm gonna let it cool and assess the situation.
So here's what I have at this point. When I was brazing on it, the joint that had been exposed to so much heat is wanting to conform to the fit of the bicycle rack in the frame, and so it exposed some more cracks. That's why I was brazing on the other side. So hopefully I filled the new crack that got exposed. And I'm putting a lot of material on there, so basically you're getting a lot of bronze and hopefully some will drip into the cracks and then when I sand it down I'll leave a little extra material on top so you have a basically a layer of bronze over the crack and now I'm going to braze over here on the side that has the paste flux on it. So here's what it looks like when I'm all done. I put a lot of material over there, knowing that bronze is real easy to grind or file or sand off. And hopefully I've filled all the cracks. I'm just letting it cool while it's still mounted to the frame so that it won't warp. So here it is after I removed the flux. I used water and a rag and a hose. And now what I'm going to do is very carefully file it down, take advantage of all that extra material that's there, which will cover the cracks. So that's all I'm gonna do on this side. Note that this is the side where I made the crack repair. You see all that extra material there was built up into sort of one continuous surface. So that was done with hand files. At one point I went and grabbed a smaller rat tail file and 80 grit emery cloth. 
This is the bottom side of the bike rack, so it's not seen. Now I'm going to turn it over and do the top side, which will have to be perfect. So I was not grazing on this surface today. It was under where I was working, and so some of the flux and material dripped down there. So this side's already been finished, and it was very good. All I need to do is clean up where the flux and the bronze drip down. So here's the top side after I finished filing and sanding. This is the side of the bike rack that people see. And I was not brazing on today, just had some stuff drip down on it. So it looks good. So now I reinstalled it. And when I reinstalled it, it did not crack because we had filled the crack when it was installed on the bike frame. So I'm going to include some close-ups of the repair at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.